Hi bag makers, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and I'm with Sew Yours. If you're brand new here, I design sewing patterns for bag making. I also offer hardware, zippers, sewing notions, and more on my website, all for bag making at sewyours.com. Today's video, I am going to be sewing up the newest sewing pattern that I have on my website, the tag along bag. And this is style B of the bag. So I have two different versions of this bag in the one pattern. So this is style B, which is the purse style with the flap closure on the front exterior. And then I have style A, which is my water bottle pocket version. I do do a brief rundown on the water bottle pocket version for you, um, but I do have Brandy Jackson of Beans, Bags, and Handicrafts that does plan to go ahead and do a sewing tutorial on this particular version um, after the new year in 2023. So you can look for that then. I've done a separate introductory video on um, the features that this bag has to offer um, and the interfacings, the fabrics that I recommend using. So you can go ahead and check that out. It'll be in the description box below. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into the video and start making the tag along bag in style B. Okay, let's go ahead and look at all of the pieces that make up the tag along. I am going to be making a completed style B version, which is this bag right here. So we're gonna start by going over all the pieces that make up style B and stick around as I'm also gonna show you the pieces that make up style A, which is the water bottle pocket version right here. All right, so we will begin with the vinyl pieces. So as mentioned before, you can make this bag in quilting cotton, vinyl, cork, or a combination of um, either of those. Here I have my zipper panel in the vinyl with some Decavo light ironed onto it. I've got the lining version of the zipper panel right here with the woven interfacing ironed onto it. I do sell so woven fusible interfacing on my website now. So you can check that out. Uh, currently out of stock, I uh, just need to get some time to um, update the website and cut up the interfacing for you. So I should have that restocked in the next week or two. So this is the zipper panel. And the zipper panel is the panel that runs along right here underneath this handle. Here I have the gusset. So the same thing, same stabilizers and interfacings, same fabrics and the zipper panel is here along the bottom. I've got my handle. This is a four inch handle that I've prepped out by drawing a line down the center, adding double-sided tape along both the left and the right sides. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to make a crossbody strap because I've done that in many videos, but I've also got my crossbody strap here prepped just the same. You can see here the crossbody strap is going to be narrower than the handle. This is a three quarter inch crossbody strap and a, a one inch wide handle. So here's the handle and the crossbody strap. It's just like any old crossbody strap right there. And that's the three quarter inch. As I already mentioned, all hardware can be purchased on my website in addition to hardware kits for these specific bags. So you can check that out on my website at sewyours.com. Here we have our card slot pocket right here. So this is a very simple raw edge card slot pocket. I can show you right here on this bag. This is just the card slot. It's like a little slip pocket, just a big enough for some credit cards and a little bit of cash folded um, and put in there if you wanna use that. There is a um, quilting cotton um, measurements on the cutting guide. If you wanna make it in quilting, co quilting cotton, you can do that. We are going to move on to the body of the bag, which is all in quilting cotton here. So I've laid it out basically how the bag is going to be constructed together for the most part, so you can kind of see right here. Let me move them side by side so we can show you the difference. These four pieces are my zipper ends. These pieces do not have any woven interfacing on them, and they are going to be to the left and the right side of the zippers right here. I've just got my zipper to show you here. That's a five and a quarter inch zipper. This is my flap closure top piece. I've got one exterior and one lining, and that is piece a G right there, which is this piece right here on the flap closure. Here we have the flap closure bottom piece. That is piece G1. We've got an exterior and a lining 
right there. And let me show you here what I did on my pattern pieces. Since uh, some of the pattern pieces, most of the pattern pieces uh, are for both styles, uh, I just went ahead on all of my pattern pieces and since I knew I was making B, I used a highlighter just to highlight um, that this is going to be for piece B. So that's a little uh, trick to keep everything straight and organized since we're kind of doing two patterns in one right here. And that's that piece right here. So it's that's the exterior and your lining is the back side right there. We're going to move on to the flap closure lining pieces. This is um, pattern piece H and you're going to have and two lining pieces. One's going to have some stabilizer iron to it while the other one does not. And that is going to be the inner portion of this slip pocket right here and this piece right here. This piece is the one that has the stabilizer on it. Next we have our slip pocket. So we have our slip pocket right here and we have one with some stabilizer on it which was my deck of a light and one without, just the woven interfacing. So that's these two pieces right here. And this is the one that has, um, that is not folded on the line. So you'll have um, on this particular bag, on style B, you're gonna have two slip pockets. You're going to have one on the back of the bag and one on the front. The one on the back, you can see here, is just a little bit taller than the one on the front. The reason that I did it taller here is it fits the larger um, iPhones um, and the, just the larger cell phones in general. That's nice and perfect right there. While this one I had to make it shorter so that I can fit everything um, together right here. So one of the slip pockets for style B is going to be cut on the fold on the top of the pattern piece. And I think it's in here. I'll, sh I'll get to that and show you what I mean. While the other one is going to be not folded. So that's the larger one right here. All right, here we have a C1, this is the exterior bottom piece, and you're only cutting one of those in the exterior fabric, and that's this piece that's right here in the back of the pocket. And the top right here, we have C, which is the exterior top. It's this piece here. This is the one that I recommend if you have a bag tag, I'm adding your bag tag to. So those are all of the front exterior of Style B. Let's move on to the lining. So you're going to have two lining pieces right here for the inside of the bag. Right there. Now you'll see in this one, I put the uh, slip pocket right here on the opposite side. Don't, don't personally like it there. It's a little bit harder to access. I do recommend, and I've written it into the pattern, to put it on this side right here. And then your card pocket would be ironed onto one of those, or sewn onto one of those right there. You are also going to need a binding. I did do the double fold bias binding on this particular bag. And so I do have some here. I, I just use what I have on hand so it doesn't exactly match. It's going to pull in from the cream colors here in the, on the exterior of the bag. So what was what I had? I generally like to use waterproof canvas binding, but I didn't have anything that remotely looked good. Um, with this purple fabric. I did do the uh, waterproof canvas binding here on this particular version. And so you can make your own waterproof canvas binding or purchase your own here. You can also make your own uh, double fold bias binding with quilting cotton if that's what you like to do. Did that once, won't do it again. Too time consuming, don't like it. So that's just my personal preference. So those are my lining panels. Now since I kept it real simple here with just a little slip pocket here, you can certainly go ahead and add your own zipper pocket if you want. Completely up to you. You can add a larger slip pocket. Make it your own, however you want. Okay, so let's move on to the back of the bag. All right, real simple on the back. We've got the uh, slip pocket right here, the uh, exterior and the lining. And the exterior has the stabilizer ironed onto it. And that stabilizer is uh, piece E, slip pocket stabilizer. And then we've got the, um, the lining, uh, the exterior and the lining piece, which is piece A right here. So just one of those. And that's this whole entire piece on the back right here of the bag. So that is the outside of the bag. And I did want to show you the pattern piece that I mentioned earlier. 
So right here, you can see that there is a fold. So for the shorter pocket right here on the front, you're gonna go ahead and fold that down and you're gonna cut the fabric on the fold for one of the pockets for the front pocket, while the back of the pocket, you're gonna go ahead and leave it unfolded. All right, so that is style um, B. Style A, I've got a, some, some pieces kind of cut up here, but since I'm not making this bag, I'm not gonna worry um, worry about making it all in a matching fabric or anything like that. So I had accidentally cut this out of uh, this fabric when I was working on it before. So I decided to go ahead and just show you this piece since I already cut it by accident. So this is um, the water bottle pocket piece right here um, in the, ex uh, the exterior fabric. This would typically have woven interfacing on. I'm not doing it since I'm not actually using this just for the demonstration. And then I quickly cut a piece of muslin, didn't even bother to iron it because it's just for the demonstration. Um, so this is going to represent the lining portion of the water bottle pocket. Again, you're gonna have woven interfacing on it. So that would be your exterior right here and your lining right there. So that's that. All right, here we've got two of our drawstring channels, which are these pieces right here. So we've got a channel right here that the drawstring runs in, and we have one on this side as well. And there's an opening in the middle here to allow the drawstring to come through. So that's these two pieces represented in the muslin fabric. Here I have my drawstring. So in the pattern, I show you how to go ahead and make your own drawstring. Um, but you can certainly use shoelaces, you can use paracord, which is right here. You can draw, uh, use drawstring cord, which I have right here. Um, so that is um, the options for you as far as drawstrings, completely up to you. So you can make your own drawstring. Uh, drawstrings are just like a purse strap. The only difference is we're going to be folding in the raw edges on one side of each of the drawstrings and sewing that down and then folding it just like a purse strap. And here we have our strap connectors. So on this particular bag, we have strap connectors hidden behind this slip pocket on the back of the bag. So we just cut one piece, fold it over, and then cut that into half to make two strap connectors. So that is also going to, this would typically be made out of your vinyl fabric if you're working with vinyl along your gusset and your zipper panel. Um, but I didn't want to cut my vinyl up for that. So that's what that one is. So those are the only differences in pieces for style A. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk about the hardware that you're gonna need for each of the bags. I've laid out the hardware that I need for style B. So as I showed you earlier, we've got our five and a quarter inch zipper tape right here with a zipper pull attached. We've got a 12 inch zipper here and I've attached two zipper pulls, but you can certainly just use one. You don't need to have both. Then I have two one inch D rings and the D rings are right here on the bag. I've got two snap hooks, which is going to be for uh, my crossbody strap. And these are gonna be three quarter of an inch snap hooks. So the only difference on this bag is going to be the D rings at one inch. Um, these are gonna be three quarters of an inch. So we've got our snap hooks. We have a strap slider right here. This is a wide mouth strap slider, so it allows for you to easily move the thicker fabrics and vinyl and adjust it. So I have those on my website. If you're working with a bag tag, you'll need your bag tag. Uh, you're going to need a magnetic snap. Magnetic snap is going to be here for the flap closure. You're going to need a strap end or two if you prefer. I generally only use one strap end right here on the strap. Um, since you don't really see this one right here, it's kind of tucked away. And then you're going to need nine to 10 rivets for this particular bag, uh, depending on how many rivets you like to add to your strap. Um, I generally add two here and I normally only use two right here, but on this particular one, I went ahead and, or I should say, I normally only use one right here, but in this version I used two, so that would make it in total 10 rivets because we've got three over here and three over here as well. And then the, the bag that I'm making here in the video is for my daughter. 
Um, and we decided that we're gonna also go ahead and make a large uh, tassel to go down the side here of the bag. And so I've got these new tassel caps that I went ahead and um, will be having on my website here shortly. So I've got a tassel cap that will be just clipping to the D-ring right here to allow it to hang down. So I'll be making that. So that's all of the hardware for style B. Let's go over style A. And it's almost the same. So for style A, instead of the one inch D-rings, we're gonna be doing three quarter of an inch D-rings. The reason being is we have the three quarter inch D-rings here in the back. Uh, that's all is necessary on this particular version. Whereas we have to stick with the one inch D-rings on this version because we're working with a one inch wide handle. So we've got those D-rings. Uh, let's see here. You will need a cord lock, which I have right here. Again, these are on my website in all six finishes. And to show you what the cord lock is, it's right here. I love the cord locks. So you can just basically squeeze it and pull it up the cord and it keeps um, the gather nicely right here. And then you just wanna release it whenever you want. Now I haven't done this. I just realized I need to do this on this bag is I did go ahead and seal off my ends with a lighter, but so that I don't slide off my turn lock, or excuse me, my cord lock, uh, you wanna go ahead and make a little knot on the bottom of your drawstrings. That way that doesn't happen, so just like that. So I'll do that with the other one in a moment. Um, and then as far as rivets, you don't need nearly as many rivets for this particular version. You'll need three to four rivets for your strap, You'll need one rivet on both sides here, so that's four, five, six, and then you'll need two um, where your strap connectors are if you want. So that would be a total of eight rivets on this particular one. So that is all, oh, and then as far as the zippers, you're only going to need your 12 inch zipper on style um, A only. Okay, so let's get into sewing up style B, and throughout the video, I will also be showing you how to make style uh, a as well, but we won't be making that as a completed bag. Um, Brandy Jackson of Beans, Bags, and Handicrafts is probably going to be doing style um, A in a video um, right after the new year, so you guys can check that out if you want, and I'll make sure the product listing on the website is updated with a link to her video when she does release that. If you're brand new to making a crossbody strap, then I have a separate video on my YouTube channel you can check out. I've also done this in several other sewing tutorials. Um, so here I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the completed strap. Right, I finished my crossbody strap. I went with a lighter purple contrasting stitching on this. Did two of the rivets on this end with the strap end. And I did one rivet on this end without a strap end. We're gonna start the video with some of the portions of style A. So this is the water bottle portion of the bag. So if you're making style A, continue watching. However, if you're making style B, you're gonna go ahead and skip this section of the video. I will have timestamps in the description box below for you to go ahead and skip ahead as necessary. So we are gonna be making the drawstrings to start here. This step can be skipped if you are going to go ahead and use some purchased drawstring cord, paracord, uh, you could use shoelaces and so forth. So if you are going to be make, you've already purchased your own, you can skip this portion of the video as well. So here I have made um, my own drawstrings out of the cotton, the quilting cotton here fabric. Um, this option I'd rather not do again. Uh, when you fold at such a small amount here and you have to press with an iron, your fingers could get in the way and you can burn yourself. I just don't like it. I also like the look of pre-made cord myself, but this is definitely an option for you if you don't wanna go out and purchase um, drawstring cord. So what I've done on this one is I actually made this drawstring cord and um, made the whole entire bag before I got my cord locks in stock. So when I went to add my cord lock, I noticed that the folded end of my drawstring here was not fitting over the cord lock because it was there was too bulky right here. So that's something to consider. And I would recommend that you get everything folded and try your cord lock on this end to see if it'll fit or not. Um, if it's not going to fit, you may want to consider adding the drawstring on the side that's not going to be folded 
and then when you're doing all of your folding and you're sewing you're just gonna have to move that cord lock out of the way to get everything done and your cord lock will just be on your drawstring um, before we finish the bag so I generally just add my cord lock at the very end but you may not be able to do that so when you're doing shopping if you are going to be purchasing a pre-made cord and a cord lock make sure that you look at the diameter of the inside hole of your cord lock and match that up with your drawstring to make sure that it's going to fit through that's something to consider so let's talk about how to make that drawstring if you're choosing to do so I've done a little prep work right here on my drawstrings. I'm not actually gonna sew this up since it's just a demonstration, but here we have one drawstring cord. I have the wrong side facing up right now. What I've done is I have drawn a line one half inch away from the short raw edge. I went ahead and took this over to my ironing board and pressed in that short raw edge to meet that line drawn, which is basically creating a quarter inch fold. Then you're going to fold once more to create another quarter inch fold and you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and sew that down. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and fold this in, in lengthwise. So you're going to fold wrong sides together, press it with an iron, then you're going to open this back up and you're going to fold those uh, long raw edges in to meet that center line, just like we do with the uh, um, a crossbody strap and then you're gonna fold once more so it's exactly like a crossbody strap right here then you're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and you want to close up this opening right here you only need to sew down the one side Sew as closely as you can approximately um, 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch to get that closed up and then there you have a drawstring cord that is ready to attach to your water bottle pocket once we make that so go ahead and get that done as I said, I'm not going to sew mine since I'm not actually making this version, but that's how you do the drawstrings. Now we're going to go ahead and make our drawstring channels, which are right here on the top of the water bottle pocket for style A. That is done in a very similar fashion um, to the drawstring. So in, in this example here, we're going to be uh, creating a line three-fourths of an inch away from the short raw edge. You're going to take and fold that to meet that line that you just drew and then you're going to fold it once more again and then you're going to go ahead and sew that down so here i have this one folded i didn't fold it the whole way so there you have that folded just like that and sewn this is the wrong side facing up you're going to go ahead and fold this in half and you're going to press it with an iron and now your drawstring channel is prepped and ready to go now you're going to want to grab the exterior water bottle pocket piece. Yours is going to have the woven interfacing already ironed onto it. And you're going to take those drawstring channels that you just sewn, and you're going to go ahead and place those along the top edge, matching up the outside left and right corners. And there's going to be about a three quarter of an inch gap here in the center. I've got the raw edge of the drawstring channels on the top, and I have the folded edge of the drawstring channels here at the bottom. Take that, clip it into place like I've got right here. And you're gonna go ahead and base stitch this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now I've got that sewn on. This is my drawstring channel. You wanna take the lining portion of your water bottle pocket, which I have right here. And we're gonna say that this is the right side of the lining and the right side of the exterior. So you're gonna put right sides together you're going to clip this into place along the top and bottom edges and you can do the sides as if you wish as well get all everything lined up and then you're going to sew along this top edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance and you're also going to sew the curved edges right here at a quarter of an inch seam allowance do not sew the sides and do not sew the bottom I've got the top and the curves sewn now, and now you'll just wanna go ahead and trim down your seam allowance, and if you need to, go ahead and cut some notches along the curves right here. I'm not gonna do that since this is just for demonstration purposes. Turn this right side out. You're gonna take this over to your iron and you're gonna press all of your seams flat. And then you're gonna take this back to your sewing machine, and you're gonna go ahead and sew along the same sides that you just sewn, and you're, so you're gonna top stitch at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pressed out, and I'm gonna top stitch here, along this curve, and along the top edge. 
Now it's time to go ahead and insert your drawstring, whether it is a drawstring that you've purchased or one of the ones that you made. And the way that I like to do that is I like to go ahead and add a safety pin to the end of the drawstring here. And from the outside, you're gonna go ahead and insert the uh, safety pin into the drawstring channel and just feed it through coming out the center. Your drawstring is going to be pre-cut already. Uh, mine, since I'm not actually making the water bottle pocket, I'm not cutting it so that way I have the full size pieces for a future project. My drawstring is now pulled through the channel. At this point, we want to go ahead and sew down the edge right here just on the drawstring channel to lock in the drawstring so that way it doesn't accidentally pull the whole way through. So you're going to do that for this side as well as the opposite side. Now you'll want to go ahead and grab your uh, exterior and lining panel pattern piece A as well as your exterior panel which already has your stabilizer ironed onto it. We're going to use the pattern piece here to gauge where we need to place our water bottle pocket. So all I have to do is place the pattern piece right on top of my exterior just a little bit off to the side. What I'm going to do is transfer that little dash right there on my fabric itself just like this. Then slide this over on the opposite side, make my little mark. That's going to tell me where the top of my water bottle pocket should be placed. It's probably going to be hard to see on camera, but the little dash is right there that I just made. You're going to place that top edge of the drawstring channel with the line that you just drew. Clip this into place. Do the opposite side, matching up the line with the top of the drawstring channel. From here, you're going to go ahead and find the center of your bottom here of your water bottle pocket. You can do this by folding it into half and clipping a little notch. And you're going to repeat the same thing for your exterior panel. Find the center there. I'm just going to eyeball it for the moment. And you're going to go ahead and place the bottom centered here on the bottom of the exterior panel. Now we're going to go ahead and continue clipping along the left and the right sides. So I pull this nice and tight, clip the bottom, alright so I've got everything clipped into place. Now we want to take this over to our sewing machine. We're going to base stitch the left and the right sides as well as this bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, that's going to create our water bottle pocket. I'm not going to do that since I'm not making this version, but I did want to go ahead and show you that. Again, as a reminder, Brandy Jackson of Beans, Bags, and Handicrafts will be making this video after the first of the year, so sometime after January of 2023, so you can check out her video um, in de depth for her actually making this particular version of the uh, bag. All right, once you have this sewn on, the next thing that you're going to do after that is you're going to go ahead and grab your lining panel A without the stabilizer ironed on it, and you're going to place that wrong sides together with the exterior panel just like this, clip it into place, base stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Then your exterior front of style A will be complete. All right, now we're going to work on style B, the exterior front right here. And the first thing that we're going to start with is the slip pocket here on the front. We need to install our magnetic snap. So I, I've laid out both of my slip pockets um, for this particular style, style B. You can see here we've got the one that's larger and we have the one that's smaller. So this one was cut with um, the pattern piece not folded. This one was cut with the pattern piece folded. We want to work with the one that's folded, and that is because that's the shorter slip pocket. So again, like I mentioned earlier, we've got one here on the front that's shorter than the back pocket. So put the taller one away or the bigger one away. So working with the shorter one, you'll need your female portion of your magnetic snap. Take your exterior, flip it wrong side up. Take your ruler and measure up two inches from the bottom center. Make your marking. Place your washer over that to go ahead and indicate where you need to have your slits cut for your prongs, which I've already done. 
I'm going to flip this back, install my magnetic snap. So I've got my snap in right there. I like to add some additional um, Decaville light so that way I can further protect the fabric, which I'll go ahead and do. I'm going to add my washer and then I'm going to add some tape on the top of that so that way everything is protected and the metal is not rubbing it through the lining side of the bag later on in the future. The following steps can be applied to the slip pocket on the exterior back of style A as well as the exterior front of style B. I've got my magnetic snap now installed and I've gone ahead and placed the exterior and the lining panels right sides together, clipped it along the top here. We're going to take this to the sewing machine and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I've sewn the top edge at a quarter of an inch. I've taken this over to my iron, flipped this right side out. You want to go ahead and press this top edge. You're going to sew this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to base stitch around the edges here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance as well. All right, I've got that top stitched and base stitched. I'm going to repeat the same exact process except for the magnetic snap portion for the larger slip pocket here, which is going to be the back slip pocket. I've constructed my back slip pocket for style B, which is also going to be the exact same for style A right here. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to do the back exterior of style A. So we've already made our slip pocket, which um, we, well, we have off to the side. We need to construct the back panel here, which is done in two portions. That's going to be the exterior top C and the exterior bottom C1 pieces. You're gonna to need to also grab your strap connectors, which I have already pre prepared here. So what I have done is I drew a line down the center of the wrong side of my strap connector. Then I folded in the long raw edges to that center line. I pressed it with an iron, but if you're working with vinyl, instead of using the iron, you're gonna apply some double-sided tape along the left and the right side of the line drawn. Then go ahead and remove the paper backing, fold those edges in and press it down with your fingers. Take this over to the sewing machine and you're gonna go ahead and top stitch, add an eighth of an inch seam allowance down the left and the right side of the strap connector. Once you've gone ahead and done that, you're gonna take your strap connector, which I'm not sewing this one because it's just for the demonstration. Once it's sewn, you're gonna cut it in half and now you'll have two strap connectors. You're gonna slide this through your three quarter inch D-rings, just like that. Repeat for the other one. And then we're gonna uh, let the paper represent my fabric right now. So this would be my um, exterior bottom piece. And this is going to be right side up. You're gonna take your strap connector and you're gonna lay it on your fabric, which you can transfer these markings um, on the top edge of your fabric. You're gonna lay the strap connectors just where they're indicated here. Lay, lay being the strap connector overhang about a half of an inch on both of the connectors here. Base stitch that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Do that for the other one as well. Then you're gonna go ahead and take your um, exterior top piece. You're gonna place that right sides together and you're gonna go ahead and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Then once you've done that, you're gonna open this up and you're gonna go ahead and press your seams to the bottom and you're gonna top stitch here. So that top stitching is done right here. And what you can do then and that's going to force your strap connectors to go in the upward position like this. This is what it's going to look like when it's sewn. Then you'll have that little extra tail um, right here on your fabric. So you can go ahead and insert a rivet along um, both of those strap connectors to further secure it into place. And actually I should show it like this, sorry. So you would put your rivets right there. If you have any questions on this process, please go ahead and let me know. But I do have this um, all shown in photos in the pattern. Once you have this back panel here constructed, all you have to do is lay the slip pocket that you previously prepared on top of it, base stitch around the edges to secure it into place and put it to, to the side until later. Now you wanna take that back slip pocket, the one without the snap, 
and lay that on top of your exterior panel A right here, matching up the bottom and side edges. Clip this into place, and you're gonna base stitch this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna lay that back slip pocket without the magnetic snap on top of your exterior panel A, just like this. Clip it into place, and you're gonna base stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and that is creating this back slip pocket. Let's go ahead and work on our lining panel that's gonna have our card uh, slip pocket on. So all you gotta do is take your card slip pocket, fold it in half, wrong sides together, go ahead and clip it a couple of places, and all you need to do is top stitch here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along that folded edge. Next, go ahead and place your card slot pocket two inches down from the top center on your lining panel. And that is the lining panel without the stabilizer on it. And you're going to go ahead and top stitch this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along the left, bottom, and right sides. And here is your simple slip pocket for cards and folded cash on your lining panel, which can be done on both style A and style B. My slip pocket is now uh, completed for the back exterior of the bag. Now I've gone ahead and placed my lining panel with the card pocket wrong sides together with the exterior back panel that has the slip pocket here. And all I'm gonna do is go ahead and base stitch the, these two pieces together with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. My back exterior on style B is now complete and I'm gonna set that aside for later. We are now gonna move on and work on style B, the front exterior. Um, so we're gonna go back to the slip pocket here that we started to prep out. Now you're gonna go ahead and grab piece C1, which I have right here. That is my exterior bottom. You're going to lay that on your workspace right side up, then lay your slip pocket, which was the shorter one that's remaining with the magnetic snap right side up. And we're going to go ahead and base stitch this in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Let's go ahead and move on into making the flap closure here for style B. I have my five and a quarter inch zipper here. I've already added my zipper ends of right sides facing together with the zipper, the zipper sandwiched in between. You're going to go ahead and sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance down the short raw edge of the zipper here. Then I'm going to repeat to attach the zipper ends to the opposite side of the zipper and again sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Got both of those sewn on and I've already finished this uh, left side right here. What I did is I took the two zipper ends, folded them right side out. Then you're just going to take it over your sewing machine and you're going to sew straight across the edge right here at a eighth of an inch. Now you want to grab your exterior flap closure bottom piece, which is G1. You're going to take the zipper that you just prepped, place it right sides together along the top straight edge right here, making sure that the zipper itself is centered on the um, flap closure bottom piece like I have. And as you'll see here, the zipper ends are going to overhang a little bit. We're going to trim those down later. Go ahead and take this over to your sewing machine and base stitch this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now you're gonna go ahead and take your lining piece of G1, which is the exterior bottom, place that right sides together with the zipper sandwiched in between, clip it into place, and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now you wanna go ahead and turn it right side out. Take this over to the iron if you wish, and you're gonna go ahead and press this nice and flat. We're gonna go ahead and top stitch along this edge right here at a eighth of an inch seam allowance and base stitch around the edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, everything is top stitched and base stitched. Now I can go ahead and trim down the sides here of my zipper ends, flush with the exterior bottom right here of the flap closure. All right, now we just need to go ahead and take uh, pattern piece G, which is the flap closure um, top piece. And just like we did with the bottom piece, you're gonna go ahead and 
take this, pick, uh, clip it into place, baste it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Then you're gonna come in and you're going to place the lining side on, clip it into place. Your, your zipper is gonna be sandwiched in between. And you're gonna sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, the top has now been attached and I also went ahead and top stitched along this side of the zipper. So that's what it looks like. Now, you can see that my fabric is different on this side. You never actually see that from inside the pocket, so it can be different, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be the purple fabric. The next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna grab one of our lining pieces that does not have the stabilizer. So we're gonna set the one with the stabilizer aside, and this is the flat closure lining piece H. We are gonna go ahead and put the um, lining right side up, and we're gonna go ahead and place the flap closure right side up, just like this. Go ahead and base stitch around the outside edge at an eighth of an inch. All right, now I have a pocket, as you can see right here, with the lining on the inside. The last thing that we need to do is we need to put the back side of the flap closure, which is this side right here, on the bag right here. And so I need to go ahead and install the male portion of my magnetic snap. I've installed the male portion of my mag magnetic snap one inch up from the bottom center of the flap closure lining piece, just like I have right here. And I've added my duct tape. Place the lining right side together with the constructed uh, flap closure exterior piece. And you're gonna go ahead and clip this into place and you're gonna sew along the left, bottom, and the right sides only at a quarter of an inch. Do not sew the top. Now that those are sewn together, I've gone ahead and trimmed down my seam allowances and I added, I clipped a couple of notches here along the curves. We wanna turn this right side out. Here's my flap closure uh, turned right side out and top stitched along all edges. I closed up the top edge as well. So here you can see we've got our pocket and our flap. Okay, I've grabbed my exterior bottom piece as well as my slip pocket piece that is already sewn together. What we wanna do is we're gonna take our flap closure piece, um, place that right side up along the right side of the exterior bottom piece. And we're gonna match up the, uh, bot, uh, the raw edge here along the top with the top edge of the uh, flat closure, making sure that it's centered. So I'm gonna find my centers off camera here. Base stitch that together at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that that is uh, base stitched together here, um, when I go ahead and snap my uh, snap closed, there is a little bit of a bump out here. Um, that's what we want. We want to have some like three dimension to this pocket here. If you need to, you kind of use your fingers to kind of round it out at the top edge here. Okay, now we're going to work with our exterior top piece. If you are going to add a bag tag, I recommend adding it to this portion right here, making sure that it's centered. I'm going to do that in a moment off camera. Everybody's bag tag is a different size, so that's going to vary depending on the size of your bag tag, so I'm not going to tell you exactly where to place it, but roughly right in the center, um, horizontally and vertically. Once you get your bag tag placed, you're going to go ahead and put right sides together here along the top edge and sew this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, I've got my exterior top now sewn on, and what I also did is I opened up my flap. I made sure that my seam allowance was going towards the bottom of the bag. And then I moved my slip pocket out of the way and top stitch at an eighth of an inch right here. Then you close up your flap closure. And like I said earlier, you wanna use your fingers to kind of get it to round over at the top just a little bit to give it some three dimension. And there is your exterior front for style B. Next, you wanna go ahead and grab your remaining lining piece with the stabilizer um, ironed onto it. Place those wrong sides together so that you have your exterior just like this and your lining showing out. And we're going to go ahead and clip that into place and baste it around at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We have now completed the front and back exterior panels for both style A and style B. So here is my style B panels. Let's move on and construct the handle for both the style A and style B.
Here I have my handle. I've already placed the double-sided tape down the center line that I've drawn, and I've already gone ahead and folded over one of the long raw edges to meet that center line. I'll repeat for the opposite side. All right, so they're both folded towards the center line. Fold it once more. And so each side at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I've constructed my handle. I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside for the moment. Go ahead and grab your zipper panel right here that has the stabilizer ironed onto it. And you're gonna grab your 12 inch zipper. Place your 12 inch zipper right sides together with the zipper panel, clip it into place, and base stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now I've gone ahead and placed my lining zipper panel right side together with the exterior and I have my zipper sandwiched in between. Go ahead and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. This is now sewn together. Go ahead and flip it right sides out and you can finger press it. Take this to the sewing machine and you're going to go ahead and top stitch along the edge right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This is now top stitched and I also base stitched around the edges here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You want to go ahead and now find the centers of your zipper panel by clipping little notches. So I just folded it over to meet the zipper panel itself and created that notch. Do that for both sides. Okay, when I place my handle on top of my zipper panel for both styles, I like to have the folded edge facing in this direction away from the zipper. Grab that handle that you already prepared, and you want to measure over three and one eighths inch from each raw edge, like I have here, and I've made a mark. This is going to tell us where we need to go ahead and stop sewing. Grab some clips, and you're going to go ahead and clip your handle to your zipper panel, making sure that it's centered with the notch that you've already clipped out. It's going to create um, a bump for your handle right here. What we'll do now is we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine and if you prefer you can add some uh, double-sided tape along the bottom side of the handle up to this point. I just go ahead and hold it into place and make sure that it's centered right here. But you're going to go ahead with your uh, sewing machine and sew at an eighth of an inch seam allowance right down the, this side of the handle across where we made that three and one eighth inch mark and sew back down the opposite side. Do that for this side as well as this side. Okay, I've gone ahead and stitched that into place. Now you want to go ahead and punch a hole and install a rivet just to the right of this line that you went ahead and stitched. And you're going to repeat that for the opposite side. Let's go ahead and go over how to place the handle on the zipper panel for style B. So here I have my handle, which I've already pre-marked my measurements. What you want to do is you're going to measure over one inch from the short raw edge and make a little mark. Then you're going to measure from the, this mark that you just made over three quarters of an inch and make a mark. And then you're going to go ahead and measure again from this short raw edge over three and one eighths of an inch and make a mark. Now this is going to tell us where we need to start and stop our sewing. So let me go ahead and show you on this particular bag right here what I'm talking about. So this is the one inch mark. This is the three quarter of an inch mark right here. And then this is the three eighths of an inch mark right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead at one eighth of an inch. So up to that first one inch mark, across there and back down. But we have to add our D ring, which I'll show you in a moment. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to sew a rectangle um, between these other two marks that we made, the three quarter of an inch mark and then the three and one eighth of an inch mark. So we need to grab our D-ring and I have my folded edge in this direction right here. And we are doing the one inch D-ring, so slide a D-ring on both ends. And then place your handle on the middle of the zipper panel. Okay, 
And now we're going to start and sew one eighth of an inch in over to the one inch mark and back down. Then I'm going to take my D-ring and I'm going to push it flush against where I just sewn. And then we're going to go ahead and sew one eighth of an inch rectangle here between these two lines. All right, I've got my handle sewn on. My machine was giving me some issues with skipped stitches, so I did the best that I could. I'm not quite happy with the results, but we're gonna push forward, uh, do this due to the sake of time. So now our zipper panel is now sewn. Now you're gonna to wanna to install two rivets within this rectangle right here. That's going to further support the edge of the handle right here, as well as where this D-ring is. Do that for both sides. We need to get our gusset pieces, so the exterior and the lining. We're going to start with the um, exterior with the stabilizer already um, ironed onto it. And this is going to be for both versions A and versions B. You're going to go ahead and match up the short raw edges here and clip it into place. You're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to sew this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I've attached my gusset exterior to both sides of my zipper panel, as you can see here. My rivets I've added as well, which I didn't show you on the last shot, so my rivets are also added. But now it's time for us to go ahead and add our lining gusset. So I'm going to turn that back right side out, and then get your lining gusset right here. You're going to put this right sides together with the um, lining portion of your zipper panel and clip that into place you're going to sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance I've sewn on the lining side of my gusset to both ends right here so this is what it would look like before we turn it right side out so let's go ahead and turn everything right side out now okay so this is where we're at And you can see we've got the lining in there. So now we want to go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine. We're going to top stitch here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along both sides. And then we also want to base stitch the um, gusset exterior and lining together by going around the circle right here on both sides. The next thing that you want to do is you're going to add a rivet in this rectangle or you want to call it a square right here on both sides, making sure that it's centered to the best that you can and that'll complete all of the rivets along the handle. My gusset is now completely prepped and ready to go and I can now sew it to my front and back exterior panels which I have right here. This is going to be the same for style A and style B. What we want to do is we're going to start with the front exterior panel and as you can see here on the bag this is the front exterior and we're going to work with the gusset side that does not have the zipper so this one right here. What I've done already is I found my center of my gusset the top and bottom centers by folding it into half and I clipped the notch right there and a notch at the bottom. For the zipper side I just went ahead with a little pen and made a mark. I don't want to cut my zipper because I don't want it to fray and I clipped a notch at the bottom on that side. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this wrong side out. We wanna make sure that we're matching up the side without the zipper to the front exterior of our panel here. Clip this into place. I like to then go and do the bottom side, matching up those center notches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to clip around all of the sides. I usually start with one side, do a little bit, then I do the opposite side, then I come in from the bottom on both sides, and then I finally do the, the straight edges right here. So let me get everything clipped into place. And if I need to, I'm going to cut some notches in my gusset around the curves. I've got this all clipped together now. I'm going to go ahead and sew along the outside edge with a quarter of an inch. I like to start at the bottom center and work my way around. All right, I have sewn that on, and now it's time for me to add the opposite uh, lining panel and back panel here. So all I want to do is match up my top and bottom centers, 
uh, clip around the edges and then I clip the sides. You do not want to clip curves on your zipper tape, otherwise your zipper tape may fray in the future, so don't do that. Um, I definitely recommend using a stiletto when you're sewing around these top curves. It really helps you to get around there. You're also going to want to make sure that you open up your zipper. That way you can turn the bag right side out later. And sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I've now got that second side, which is the back exterior, sewn on to the gusset. And I've also gone ahead and added my double fold bias tape. All I did was simply take and open it up and wrapped it around the edges. I call this the lazy method. There is another technique for doing binding, uh, but I am short on time, so I'm going to go ahead and just do it this way. Um, in the future, I do plan to do an additional video specifically on all the different techniques of binding bags. Um, in the meantime, you can check YouTube out. There's plenty of videos out there already on this particular technique if you haven't done um, bias binding yourself. Um, I mentioned in past videos and earlier in this video that I actually like waterproof canvas binding um, as my preferred method. I just did not have a color that remotely looked good with this bag. So let me go ahead and get this all sewn together. We are going to go ahead and sew this um, just under a quarter of an inch seam allowance um, and we'll repeat the same process for the other side. All right, I have my binding all complete. As you can see, it is not perfect. I don't really fuss over the binding too much, especially when it's a bag for me or my daughter. Uh, you don't really see it when you turn it right side out. So now all I gotta do is turn this right side out, um, which I'll do here off camera because it can be a little tricky with this smaller bag. All right, here is my finished tag along bag and I've added my tassel. Isn't she absolutely adorable? And I went ahead and put on a purple shirt so that I can match with my bag. Although this is gonna be Hannah's bag, which is my daughter. So here's a little closer up look of it. Love how this turned out. It's quite striking with that deep plum vinyl that I used. I hope you enjoyed this video. Well, now that I sew mine, it's time to sew yours.